Hello. Today I'm looking at some of the things that we can do in spring to support our local wildlife. I'm Liz Zorab and this is By the Farm. February the 14th marks the start of National Nestling Box Week here in the UK to remind people that this is a really good time to be cleaning out old nesting boxes and putting up new ones. So if you have any existing nesting boxes, now is the time to get them cleaned out and ready for a new season. Do be careful that birds haven't already started nesting in them before you start clearing them out. We have a couple of existing nesting boxes here on site, but I've also bought some new ones. Uh, I've got a nest that looks like this. It's made from clay uh, with a wooden surround, and this is for house martins, and it mimics uh, exactly how uh, they build their nests in the wild. We had several families of house martins that lived with us uh, in our home in Monmouthshire. One of them was right up in the eaves of the house and so as we sat in the kitchen we could see them swooping in and out. It was great to watch. Uh, and we've got house martins and swifts here. So I'm really excited to be able to get this up. It's not just me. In fact, it's hardly going to be me at all. Um, <laughs> Dave the Hero is with us today uh, and he's going to be climbing ladders and putting all of these up for me. One of the really good things you can do uh, is to put in uh, some hedging, particularly uh, if it's mixed native hedging. So things like willow, hazel, uh, beech, hawthorn, blackthorn, all that sort of thing. And as that hedge matures, it will provide a home and food for small mammals and wild birds. So I've already started putting in some hedging. Uh, I've just put in some hornbeam, but I have got some mixed hedging uh, that I'll be doing next month. I've also got uh, an individual box which can either go uh, on a barn or on a tree uh, and the size of hole here is 32 millimetres which is just right for sparrows, great tits, blue tits and nut hatches. Another really useful thing uh, for a wildlife friendly garden is to have a wood pile or a log pile somewhere. Now it doesn't need to be as big or as messy as this. And in fact, this one is waiting for us to cut it up uh, and stack it a little more tidily and in a lower heap. I'm gonna put it right next to a fence where it's undisturbed. Uh, so this will provide shelter for small mammals, wild birds, and uh, over time we'll just slowly rot down and then we'll become home to masses of insects and uh, those insects will then carry on feeding those mammals. So uh, all in all, having some sort of wood pile, uh, some straw, some leaves, whatever you can find so in a heap, undisturbed in your garden, is really useful. You can also create a small wildlife pond. It doesn't need to be anything big or anything glamorous. Uh, even a washing up bowl would work as long as it's got a big stone in it that would allow uh, amphibians to get in and out and particularly small mammals if they fall into it by accident, something that allows them to scrabble out. So that can be done at this time of year and with any luck, it will be built just in time for frogs and toads to find it and lay their spawn. I had a look online and there's a whole myriad of nesting boxes that you can choose from. Uh, I've bought some from the RSPB. Uh, I bought this, which is a sparrow hotel. Uh, so sparrows are uh, sociable birds and they really like to nest in groups. So that's three individual nesting boxes. Uh, they can each be used by a different couple of sparrows. I'm very excited how we're going to be able to get these up today. If you'd like to see uh, those courses that we're offering at the moment, uh, do head over to buythefarm.com and I'll leave a link in the video description. One of the other things that you can do to support wildlife in your garden uh, is to plant um, early spring bulbs and flowers. And that's what I'm going to do today. This area uh, is right at the end of the food forest. It's under the shelter uh, of this hedging. Um, it's, it's fairly breezy coming that way. 
I'm about to put in some more hedging along here to provide uh, more of a windbreak at a lower level. And this area is basically undisturbed for most of the year. It's also quite boggy uh, and damp because uh, we've got a little stream uh, just running on the other side of our fence there. What I've chosen to plant in here are a mixture of native uh, wildflowers and these are cowslips. I've bought a whole load of little uh, very healthy plug plants. Uh, this one has even got uh, the beginnings of a little yellow flower and I've also bought some snowdrops. I've bought those in the green which means they're in the process of growing so they're actively growing. Usually when you buy them they are have just flowered, they've just finished flowering. These ones have arrived in flower uh, and about to flower. So I'm delighted it means that I can actually see almost immediately what they're going to look like. So today's task is to plant up this area, which is uh, about just over 10 metres by 20 metres um, with the cowslips and a few uh, of the snowdrops. And at a later moment, when I've grown them from seed, I'm also going to bring a few teasel plants down here and plant those uh, nearer to the end behind me. And so on this incredibly windy, but at least it's dry day, I'm going to get on planting those cowslips. I'm spacing them quite far apart because my hope is that they will grow and then seed themselves and fill up uh, the gaps between uh, the individual plants. I'm also planting them completely at random. so. <laughs> Although I kind of do this pace, apart, I've got no idea how far I've gone across there with them. I'm not planning to mow uh, this area uh, very much. I might pop through with a strimmer uh, in early spring and I probably won't touch it again until autumn. Because after all, if I'm growing for wildlife, I don't need it to be too neat and tidy. So I've planted a little over half of them in here and I'm now going to uh, plant them going across the food forest, just one or two here and there. So they aren't all just here. It does, it looks like they have <laughs> started moving across the food forest too. And then hopefully uh, they will also spread out over the next few years. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a couple right next to the new wildlife pond. <laughs> 